Good morning and welcome to This Week with Pastor Dino. I'm Dino and I'm so glad you are joining us here at First Presbyterian Church of Bradenton where we are cultivating hearts for Jesus from the heart of downtown. Can you believe we made it to June? It is June 7th, the 158th day of the year. Things here in Florida are about to start getting hot, but that's not what matters because the Spirit is alive and well here at First Presbyterian Church as we dive into today's devotional. Hear these words from God. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. God's word is a light for our path? Wow! You know, I was outside in the dark, this is a true story, just this last week, taking the dogs out at night. I couldn't see very well. Uh, one of the pieces of concrete on my sidewalk is raised up. I tripped over it. And you know what would have stopped me from tripping? Is a lamp, a light, a flashlight, my phone light, anything would have helped me to see that little bump on the sidewalk and stop myself from tripping. Our lives as humans, uh, we're born into sin, we're gonna trip. It's God's word that provides that lamp for our feet. It's this beautiful metaphor that reminds us that his word illumines how we ought to be, how we ought to live our lives. So I wanna encourage you this summer, maybe you're just getting out of a school year or you just kind of hit this natural break here when June starts and you're in summer mode, get into God's word this summer. Dig in, start reading one of the gospels, start at the beginning, read the Psalms, whatever you're going to do, but get into God's word and allow his word to be a lamp for your feet. Thanks be to God. This week, the church office is open all week, and we really hope you are enjoying our new series that just kicked off yesterday, You're Doing It Wrong. I love the title. I hope you are intrigued enough to be thinking about what are some of the things you could be growing in in your faith? What are some of the rough edges in your faith journey that could use some attention? Be thinking on such things, and we're going to address those all throughout the whole summer. Now, for today's interview, I'm honored to have Mike Chaplinski here in the studio. Mike is the director for Suncoast Youth for Christ. He's a good friend, a good friend to our church, one of our very faithful mission partners. And let's take you to the interview with Mike. Well, good morning once again. I am honored to be here in the studio with my friend and colleague, Mike Chaplinski, who runs Youth for Christ here in the Sun Coast. Mike, how are you doing today? Doing fine, beautiful day. It is a beautiful day and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all your ministry. And I do wanna let everyone at home know you're actually gonna be on the show several times uh, over the upcoming weeks because Youth for Christ is one of our great mission partnerships here at the church has been for a long time, and we're really passionate about hearing what's going on, but why don't you give us kind of today an overview of what Youth for Christ is all about and what you're doing in the Sun Coast. Thanks, Nino, and it's an honor to be a part of this, so thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Youth for Christ is a, a mission uh, about 74, 75 years old, it started in the Chicago area, but it's been in the Manatee, Sarasota area for about 65 years. Okay. I'm a product of Youth of Christ at 13 years old, no, 15 years old at Manatee High School. I just lost, had a big emptiness in my heart, but found Youth of Christ. I started going to the club meetings and through the messages, I asked Christ into my life, was discipled, started attending a church here locally, and felt God call me into the ministry. But uh, just excited to say that uh, good things are happening in our mission right now. That's awesome. So the, the mission of Youth of Christ is to reach youth like me who are not going to church, lost youth, uh, full of problems and issues, uh, and we just wanted to love them, to hear their story, and through that relationship, share God's story with them, his love for them. Yeah, you, you've probably, uh, you know, I don't know how much you remember about my own story, but my, uh, in, in high school, I was like an atheist, kind of mean kid to, to church kids, and then had a radical transformation similar because I found a church youth group that I liked hanging out at. It was just all about those relationships. And so that's where where you really pour into these kids um, across the board of Youth of Christ is into those relationships, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's really, really cool. And you guys make it fun for them to be around a church setting. 
you give them mentor type leaders who can guide them through their spiritual life, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and we want to create just a, a fun, welcoming environment that every team feels uh, safe and welcome. And, and our one little theme we have with our 180 houses is be here, be you, belong. You know, that's cool. Yeah, and that's what we want to create. That uh, we want to build a really a loving community. It's hard because teams already feels I think a lot of them so out of place and there's so many pressures in society at school and whatnot um, if you're just a tiny bit different if you're a tiny bit other it's hard to find where you fit in so uh, I really applaud your ministry for for being able to come alongside teens who are in that and I love that that be here be you belong is a really cool oh, message yeah, yeah. And it's um, neat too you know because uh, it really is this really cool family the teens and the leaders uh, we have an assortment of black white hispanic biracial teens uh, some teens who are foster kids adopted kids uh, single parent homes uh, some teens from good homes you know it's yeah. such a mixture but it's so interesting uh, though individually may be some differences and look different but they're when they're together they're so accepting and caring for each other and it's that culture, that environment that's there. It's really a neat picture of what right. we think it should be, you know? And what biblically we learn that the family of God should be like. And it's hard to find that sometimes. You know, I know our own church is kind of dominated by one kind of culture. A lot of churches are. So to have that mix, I think, is really neat. And that you guys are able to foster that is, is really neat. So you are overseeing all of Youth for Christ in the Sun Coast, is that correct? And so where does that extend to? Um, what are kind of your boundaries for YFC? And what's your overall role? Okay. Yeah, Suncoast Youth for Christ, uh, our geography is basically from Hillsborough County, from Apollo Beach area, Waimama, Waimama <laughs> you know, that area all the way down to the southern part of Sarasota County. Okay. Now we don't have anything in Hillsborough County right now yet, uh, but where our three 180 houses are is we have one in Bradenton, uh, one in Sarasota and one in Venice. And I would say probably in the next year and a half we'll have something, a 180 house in uh, Northport, which okay. is in Sarasota County. Sure. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that, are you finding that's where you typically are getting teens to, to connect with Youth for Christ? Um, campus ministry obviously has changed a lot, especially with COVID the last year. So do you find that having the 180 house open is fostering that connection that you used to have going with campuses? Oh yeah. And you know, teens are still social. Uh, the hard part right now is everybody, their social life is looking at their phone, right. <laughs> adults and teens. Uh, but there's still, God created us to be physically together, you know. And so there's still that need for teens to be at a place that, uh, with other teenagers and all. And so uh, you're right, with COVID, we have not been able to be on the campuses. Uh, but we feel that in August, when school starts up again, we'll be able to be back on the campuses where we'll meet a lot of teenagers. Uh, we meet teens at the shelter and the detention centers where we have ministry and other things we do in the community. Uh, but our main focus right now is to, to all those connections to point them back to the 180 house, awesome. uh, where they know it's kind of like their place to be. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to hear a lot more about the 180 House uh, the next time we have you in the studio, but you are having a vision dinner on June 21st that's so going to be at the 180 House, and you also are going to be preaching here on July 25th, and we'll be telling the congregation about all kinds of opportunities that they can connect and serve with Youth for Christ. A lot of times when you hear youth and you're in a church that might have older folks, it's hard to, to bridge the gap and, and wonder, you know, how can I serve? But I'm pretty sure you've got people of all ages making an impact in teen lives, right? Yes, definitely. So there's a place for anybody who wants to serve. And Mike, I thank you so much for being here and look forward to catching you next time. Thank you, Dave. Man, that is some amazing ministry that Youth for Christ continues to do. Uh, thank you so much, Mike, and thank you, YFC. Now this week in terms of online programming, we are going to have a concert on Wednesday night. It's the first of our summer concerts. It's gonna be at 7 p.m. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. I wanna especially thank Paul for putting it together for us. It's gonna be an awesome opportunity to uh, have just a unique worship experience during the middle of the week. We've got breakfast and Bible study on Saturday. It's over Zoom. You can join that class by going to the church website, bradenton.church zoom to get all the info you need. And we'll be in worship 
9 o'clock and 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And we're going to keep it online as well as live and in person. It's great being able to have our church family together. It's been great seeing many of you trickling back to church. But for those of you who can't yet, you are still with us in spirit. We want to honor that. It's an awesome part of what we're able to do these days. Now let us remember the word of God is like a lamp for our feet. It's what helps us to not trip up in the darkness that is our lives and can be our lives. There's plenty of darkness out there, uh, plenty of ways that we can be blinded by the ways of this world, but God's word teaches us how to live. So get into it. See what God has to say to you. And I'll see you next time on This Week with Pastor Dino. Bye-bye.